Hey everybody, this is George from DinosaurGeorge.com. First, let me apologize for it being so windy today. I don't know what the sound quality is going to be like. Hopefully it won't be too terribly bad. I, uh, I apologize for uh, taking so long to shoot one of these. I know it's been several months since the last time I had a chance to answer. My schedule has just been crazy and I've been traveling a lot. And so uh, today is the first day that I've had a chance to come back and uh, start answering all the questions I got uh, from you. So let's get into it. Starting off, Cheryl Ann from Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Can you tell me what was your most embarrassing moment? <laughs> well, Cheryl Ann, I, my life revolves around embarrassing moments, but I'll tell you, I guess what had to be the worst, and, and yeah, this, this absolutely was the most embarrassing. About 10 or 12 years ago, I was speaking at a Catholic school, and uh, driving to the school, I had the radio up pretty loud in my car. Uh, I'm an older guy, but I still rock. Rock and roll! <laughs> I, was, I was listening to a rock station, and I had the volume up pretty high. And uh, I pulled around to the back of the school to unload all of the boxes that I had my fossils in to show the students. And I had the back of my Jeep open, and the music was absolutely blaring. And uh, I turned around, and there was a group of people walking towards me. And it turns out that the school principal wanted to introduce me to the Archbishop of the Catholic Church here in San Antonio. And um, they brought him up to me. And uh, so it, it kind of caught me off guard. And the music is just blaring out of the back of my Jeep. And of course, it had to be on a rock station. Well, as luck would have it, or I guess as bad luck would have it, the song that was playing when he walked up was Rob Zombie's Devil Man. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Yeah, Devil Man is blasting, and I mean blasting out of the back of my Jeep. And they introduced me to him, and they all have this mortified look on their face because of this racket pouring out of the back of my Jeep. So it's like, uh, Dinosaur George, I'd like to introduce you to uh, the Archbishop. And I'm like, Archbishop, it's nice to meet you. And in the background is Devil Man, Devil Man. <laughs> great. So anyway, <laughs> that... Uh, that probably was the most embarrassing thing that I can think of, or at least that I'm willing to talk about. <laughs> All right, Mert from Mildura, Victoria, Australia. Hey George, my question is, who would win in a fight between a pack of Utah Raptors and an Ankylosaurus? Please answer. Well, Mert, um, Ankylosaurus, the actual dinosaur named Ankylosaurus, didn't live with Utah Raptor, but let's just say for the sake of argument that he did. Um, Ankylosaurus is an incredibly heavy armored dinosaur and he lived with Tyrannosaurus rex which means that since he lived with Tyrannosaurus rex he certainly had the ability to defend himself against a monster like T-Rex. So even though Utah Raptors certainly were pretty dangerous animals I just don't believe that Utah Raptor would have had the ability or even a pack of them would have really had the ability to uh, to kill an Ankylosaurus. I think Ankylosaurus is just too big and too well armored. Matthew from Pacific Grove, California. Could Spinosaurus pick up a T-Rex in his mouth? I hope you have a good day. Well, thank you, Matthew. That's very polite of you. I hope you have a good day as well. No, Spinosaurus, in my opinion, could not pick up a Tyrannosaurus Rex in his mouth. Um, I think Spinosaurus's neck certainly had the strength to be able to lift incredibly heavy things. But when I look at the mouth design of Spinosaurus, it just does not appear to me to be capable of, of withstanding a tremendous amount of pressure. It's too elongated. And um, if you know anything about engineering, things that are longer have a tendency to be less strong uh, if, they have, if they don't have some kind of support. And there, of course, was no support at the end of Spinosaurus's jaw. So in my opinion, I don't think he would attempt to pick up something as big or as heavy, I should say, as a Tyrannosaurus Rex. All right, man, this wind is really blowing out here today. It's a little cold. All right, I'm sorry. Man, I say the wind's blowing, then it really takes off. Okay, Colby and Austin from LaGrange, Texas. Dinosaur George, we really enjoyed your visit to my school, Sacred Heart in LaGrange. We learned a lot. How many complete dinosaurs have you put together? Thank you for your time, Colby and Austin from LaGrange, Texas. Well, Colby and Austin, uh, I, I tell you something, I really, really enjoyed speaking at your school. Um, I told you guys earlier, I've been on the road a lot. That's, that's one of the places, one of the stops I made. I was touring that part of the state, and then I went and toured West Texas. Um, I enjoyed it immensely, and the school was great. You guys were absolutely great. Uh, please make sure and thank your principal again for allowing me to come speak. Um, how many complete dinosaurs have I put together? Well, I just put a little Psittacosaurus together, uh, I guess about a month ago. Um, but in all, my gosh, I guess, I guess probably 
Well, if you count replicas, then I would have to say about 50 or 60 complete skeletons that I put together. Uh, if you're talking about authentic skeletons, wow, maybe six, five maybe, five or six, I'm not sure. Okay, Eric from Bellevue, Bellevue Nebraska. Hi, DG, hope you're well, sir. Eric, I am, always good to hear from you. Is it possible that the reason some sauropods had their nostrils on top of their heads instead of on the snout area was to prevent leaves and branches from accidentally getting into the nostril and clogging them up as they browse? Eric, that's an interesting question and that's an interesting concept. Uh, yeah, the question is, has always been, why do sauropods have their nostrils on top of their head? They, their nostrils were up here. Even the di diplo uh, diplodocus and um, apatosaurus don't have them at the end of the nose. They have them further up. So the question is, why did they do that? I've seen two potential answers. One is your answer, Eric. That is that they may have... Uh, uh, they may have had them placed there so that when they stuck their face into the bushes, they wouldn't get leaves up their nose. But let me, let me, let's go back and think about this a minute. Look at a cow, look at a horse, look at a deer. Uh, those animals are also grazing, pushing their face into the plants, and yet their nostrils are on the end. So that may not necessarily be the answer. Um, there's a, I guess there's a third answer. The second answer is, I saw once where somebody proposed that they may have had trunks like an elephant. Uh, that it's possible that they had a short trunk coming off of that head. If you look at an elephant, its nostrils are up between its eyes because the trunk extends. So that's a possibility. Now I've seen different uh, writings from different people, some that uh, say it's it's possible, some that say it's not possible. Uh, my answer is always that everything is possible, I suppose. But um, I don't know. The third one might be that perhaps by having the nostrils placed on top of the head, it allowed them to make a wider variety of sounds and perhaps uh, even a deeper sound, which uh, low frequency sound travels farther than high frequency. And perhaps they were able to produce a low frequency sound that allowed them to communicate over great distances. That's a, that's a real mystery, Eric, and, and I just don't know the answer to it, and I wish I did. Uh, if I had a time machine, would I go back and look at a sauropod? No, I would go back to last Saturday and pick different lottery numbers. <laughs> That's greed, baby. All right, last question. Uh, I think you pronounce your name Whites. It's W-Y-T-Z-E from Voorschotten, Netherlands. I hope I pronounced your name correctly, Whites, or maybe it's Wheats. Um, however you pronounce your name, please don't take offense to my mispronouncing it if I did. How fast is Utah Raptor and how high does it jump when it's attacking prey? That's a cool question, another Utah Raptor question. Um, Utah Raptor is a lot he more heavily built than the other members of the Raptor or Dromaeosaur family. He doesn't really seem to be incredibly well suited for high rates of speed. His, his um, lower leg to upper leg length isn't conducive for incredibly fast speeds. So what I mean by that is you look at an animal alive today uh, and we look at animals like cheetahs, their lower leg is longer than their upper leg and therefore they're fast. You look at a horse, its lower leg is longer than its upper leg, therefore it's fast. You look at humans, you look at elephants, uh, it's the reverse for us. Our upper leg is longer than our lower leg, so therefore we're not as fast as those other animals. So Utah Raptor appears to be not quite fast, uh, as fast as some of the other dromaeosaurs because of the size of the upper leg compared to the lower. The other thing about him is he's a little more heavily built, which means he gives up speed um, because he wants the power. So he's not as fast as we think. Now, if I had to guess speed, uh, wow, maybe he could run, I don't know, maybe 15, maybe 18 miles an hour. I don't know, boy, I wouldn't want one behind me. I can tell you whatever speed he could run, I could run one mile an hour faster if he was behind me. <laughs> As for his jumping ability, now again, he's a little bit heavier, so therefore that would impede how high he could jump, but he's got incredibly powerful legs with big leg muscles, which would have allowed him to propel that body upward. I would guess that from a running start, he might be able to jump maybe 12, 13, maybe 14 feet into the air, and that's pretty high. The main thing about him is when he lands on you, he lands with an incredible amount of power. Then he's got six massive hand claws that he would have literally dug into the side of his prey, hung on like a rodeo star on the back of a raging bull, 
and would have been kicking and slashing with those feet. And I'll tell you something, it would have been an incredible scene, but I sure wouldn't want to be on the receiving end of it. All right, you guys, that's it for today. I've got to get out of this wind because I'm getting cold. If you've got a question, go to my website, dinosaurgeorge.com. Click on the Ask Dinosaur George page and fill out the form. Keep in mind, everyone, that I receive literally thousands of questions every single week. It is impossible to answer them all, so I apologize to you if you've been writing over and over and I haven't been able to answer your questions. For all you young people out there, Make sure to practice your reading. Reading is incredibly important. It'll help you in any career you decide to have. And for everybody out there, please make sure and use good manners because I'll tell you, speaking to people with good manners sure makes the day a whole lot brighter. Take care, everybody. I'll post a couple of more of these shortly. I'll see you.